So what is this busy page? This is the table of content from the manual of the Nikon D700. There are in the vicinity of 120 entries in the table of content alone. So I'm sure you can imagine how much you can configure and set up your Nikon D700 camera. That's all good. The bad news is that making a video about this quickly becomes a very long and demanding video, both to make and to watch. So I put out the question in the YouTube community if you really wanted a video like this. And unfortunately for me, the answer was an overwhelming yes. So here it is, the first of two. Before we start, let me give you a little pep talk as to why I think you should invest in learning the Nikon menu system, provided of course that you have decided to stay with Nikon. Good news is that Nikon is a super consistent and conservative company as I see it, and they don't change their menu system unless they absolutely have to. If we look at the menu system for these three cameras, mind you, they are more than 15 years apart, then you will find that at the top level they are exactly the same or close to. The only thing that has happened is that for the D780 they added the video menu since that is new functionality and for the D700 they added the my menu probably to mitigate the deep dives into the menu system. So if you have decided to stay with Nikon, the investment in learning the menu system on the D700 probably pays off also when you have to learn your next Nikon camera. And no matter what camera you move to, I'm sure you will find this lady is in the manual for that particular camera. As I said, Nikon don't fix things that aren't broken. So how is the top level then organized? What's the logic behind the menu structure? This is how Nikon presents it, and of course that's one way of describing it. I like to think of the menu system in terms of when I use them. The setup menu is for basic setup of the camera, like formatting the memory card or setting date and time. That I would like to do before I start shooting. The playback and retouch menu are for working with pictures in camera, either reviewing them or editing them. That of course assumes you have been shooting, so there are some pictures to work with. And then there is the shooting menu, where the name gives it purpose. You probably find this menu useful while shooting. The custom settings menu is probably relevant for both initial setup and for shooting. So I hope this little graphic gives you some way to remember the purpose for each menu. When you get to know them better, then all this will be a lot easier to remember. The custom settings menu is also often referred to as the pencil menu. Next I have broken down the menu structure in what I quote calls heaviness. If you count how many lines in the table of contents in the manual the different main menus have, you will see that it is anything but a balanced tree. The custom menu for fine tuning the setup is by far the most comprehensive menu and also the one that sends people screaming out the door. Nikon has broken this menu into sub menus labeled with letters A through F and this of course helps the ease of reference but also tells that the number of menu items is significant to say the least. As you probably saw in the thumbnail, this video is the first video about the menu system and in this video I will cover all menus but the large custom menu. That will be on the agenda for the second video. So let's start with the playback menu. Here I also describe basics of navigating the menu system. So the playback menu here is uh, at the top of the list of menus and you can see I can scroll up and down in this list and uh, select the playback menu. If I go into the playback menu I do that using the left and right arrow. Uh, when I walk up and down the list here I of course use the up and down arrows but going into the menu you use the left and right arrows. So if I say I go in here to see what is the is the image review it is on. I can select that. I do that with the center button. I could also press the OK button on the camera. It gives, in most cases, the same effect. And again, I leave the menu by going left. If I then go away from this major item and come back again, you will see it remembers where I was in the menu system. Another nice feature is that to the very right you have a scroll bar that tells you where you are in the menu. Now here I only have one page, so it maybe is not that informative, but if you have a very long list in the menu, then it will show you where you are in that list and that I find to be quite useful. So let me take you through the playback menu. First of all, if we go to the top here, delete, that is where you can delete pictures, that is not a big surprise, but you can go in here and you can select them. So you can go in and see the picture in detail by pressing the plus sign. And you can, of course, walk up and down. And again, you have the scroll bar to the very right that shows you where you are in the, the full list of pictures. You can select pictures just pressing the center button like this. And then when you're done, you press OK and it will come and ask you, should you delete, or would you like to delete three images? Right now I say no to that, but th so that's basically how it works. The way you step out of a menu again is by, for instance, pressing, there are several options, but I you normally press the, the menu button that takes me back 
to the beginning. The playback folder, I have never changed that. I think it is as it was set from the factory setting, but you can name your, your folder the way you want it to. Third item here is hide image. I have never used that one either. Uh, you, if you want to understand what this is and you have forgotten your manual, you can actually push a little question mark. There's a little button here. The second from the top has a question mark. And if you press that one, you can see the explanation for that menu option. This goes for all the menu options. I have never used this one. I'm not sure I understand what it's to be used for. So let's quickly move on. Display mode. That is how much information you will see when you're reviewing your pictures. You can have several screens. You can scroll through going up and down. And here you can just select how many of those different screens that you have uh, shown or to, will scroll through. So if we go to image review, that means that the image is shown uh, right after you have taken it. And uh, that can be very useful for chimping. Some switch this off. So this is actually the options you have. Some switch this off. I just leave it on because I actually like that I can I can see the picture. After delete, that has to do with whether you step, you know, one picture forward or one picture backwards relative to the one you're deleting. So this is, uh, you know, very fine tuning, but it is of course nice that you, you can control this. Rotate tall simply means that if you're taking a picture in portrait mode, then it will be turned 90 degrees but the advantage is you don't have to turn your camera if you have a mixture of portrait and landscape a photograph finally we have the slideshow which i find to be a little bit silly but you can actually start a little slideshow where you see the pictures you have taken i'm not sure what the point is but uh, I guess the philosophy here is that you should be able to do practically everything with your pictures in camera. So, of course, there also is a slide show option. As you can see here on the bottom, there is an option that we cannot select. And that's why it's grayed out. And uh, this is probably because there's not a printer attached. In general, if there is an option you cannot select, it is gray, as you see here at the bottom. So there was actually the playback menu. I am not a big fan of the playback menu, as you can hear. I actually hardly use it. And the reason why I don't use it is because there is a playback button. And that sits here top left to your camera. And if you press that one, you can see you can do many of the things. As you do here, you can scroll through the pictures. You can zoom out and see your pictures in a smaller uh, version but of course you can see more at the same time you can go back in again and you can scroll up and down through that was what we selected just before all the different versions of the screen so you can see different types of information here for instance here the histogram is very useful as i see it but also there's a lot of good information to be found in these screens you can also delete a picture you just press the little garbage can that sits to the left of your viewfinder and uh, if you want to do that you just press one and it says will you delete and if you press once again, then you delete the picture. If not, you press the play button and you have canceled the operation. So in my mind, what I need from the playback menu is actually covered by the buttons and dials on the top left of the camera. And this is another point here is that many of the things you can do in the menu system, you can actually also do uh, via buttons and dials on the camera. I will show you some more examples of this later on. Okay, next up is the retouch menu. I never use it. The thinking is you can edit your pictures in camera, like removing red eyes, turning color pictures into black and white, crop pictures, and so on. I prefer to do that in post-processing with Lightroom or Photoshop. If you decide to make use of this menu, you will find that when you edit a picture, the D700 takes your raw file, converts it to a JPEG, and creates a new and edited file and puts it at the back of the file on the CF card. The original photo is unchanged. The shooting menu bank here in the shooting menu is a memory thing where you can store your configuration four different ways. And that is useful if you want to have several configurations you want to jump between without having to redo the configuration every time. You can reset the menu and that's actually it. The active folder and the file naming, that's about how the camera stores uh, the pictures. And I have never changed this. I have it as, uh, as uh, it was set up, I believe, from the factory. Image quality. I never go into the shooting menu and does that here because I use the quality button on top of the camera where I can show you here. If I just select this menu item, you can see if I take again and push the, the quality button on top of the camera, here is actually doing exactly the same. So this is yet another menu item where I can do it using buttons and dial. Image area, that's shifting between DX and FX. I only shoot FX, so I don't use this. JPEG compression. Well, if you shoot JPEG, I would recommend you check the uh, compression with the best uh, quality and uh, meaning the least 
compression. Uh, but that's what it's all about. Shooting menu, uh, raw, this is about how much compression you give uh, for your raw pictures. Wild balance, I have a full video on wild balance for the D700 and uh, I would never go in here and do it because you can do everything using button and dials. Set picture control and manage picture control. You can have some profiles that are used, for instance, uh, monochrome, which could be useful, but uh, I never use this. I prefer to do my work in you know, post-processing tool on a computer. And you can also build even your own profiles. That's what this menu point is about. Color space is a little bit technical, but you can choose between two options here. I won't go into details, but you you can read about the, the pros and cons for, for these two formats. Active D-Lighting has to do with, I believe it is very close to a light touch HDR, is what I would call it. So it tries to regain details uh, both in highlight and shadow areas so you can switch that on if you like vignetting control is about of, of course trying to compensate for vignetting so your your corners are not so dark as they would be otherwise long exposure noise reduction and high iso noise reduction is about reducing noise when you're shooting long exposure or with very high iso i would suggest you put those on it is the software in the camera that sort of does the processing and I think it works fine. ISO sensitivity setting, there's one option in here that I would highly recommend you use. That's the auto control, which you can switch on and off. But changing the ISO in itself, I always use the buttons and dials on top of the camera to, to do that. Live view, I think is a big subject. And uh, the thing here is that there are two ways of working with live view on the D700. One is handheld and another is tripod. And I won't go into details here, but it has to do with how it, it meters and you know what state the, the mirror is in. Uh, so I think I will do a separate video on that. But if you want to use live view, you can configure it in here. Multiple exposures, that is, you know, as it says, taking several pictures and interval time shooting. That is about shooting a time lapse or a series of pictures where the camera sort of pushes the, the shutter button. So that was the shooting menu and uh, I went a little bit faster here, but I hope also you did not fall asleep <laughs> this time around. Let's move on to the setup menu. I uh, never use format memory card because I use the two buttons you have on top of your camera. If you see the, the garbage can and the mode button, they have a little text saying format. And if you hold down those two buttons at the same time for a few seconds, format will start flashing in your LCD. And if you press once more, then your, form, your memory card is formatted. That is much faster. LCD brightness, of course, is useful to change, be able to change that. I seldom change it, I must admit. Clean image sensor, of course, that is very useful. And you can determine whether you do that at startup or you know, is it once off or you do it every time the ca camera starts and stops. Log up mirror for cleaning is uh, gray. I think that's because I have too little battery on my on my my camera here. So that's can be one reason why the, the, this is gray. And this is, of course, if we want to clean your sensor, then you need to flick the mirror away while that work is going on. Video mode is selecting between the two formats here. HDMI is the resolution. It can be, you know, very high or not so high. World time is about formatting date and time and setting the time. Language, I think, is self-explanatory. Image comment is a little bit silly, in my opinion. It's about giving a comment to an image. I mean, and it's very cumbersome to write on your camera, of course. So I never use this. Autumn image rotation. This is on, and I think that is because I want to see my picture both landscape and portrait the same way. Battery info is very useful once in a while to check that. This is uh, how this is about how your battery is doing. And you can see I have a very well functioning battery, although I only have 38%. The battery is quite doing quite well. Image authentication and copyright information is about adding information into your picture regarding basically you who has made the picture and and you can set that off if you want to save load settings is about saving the camera settings to an sd card so if you have several cameras where you want to copy your settings between you can use that option of course obviously if you simply want this as a backup gps is an old-fashioned thing i never use it you need to have a gps unit attached to the camera i think this shows the age of the ca camera non-cpu lens data 
This one is very useful because this is about setting up your camera so that it can accept lenses without CPU contacts. And you can see here, I have several lenses. And the advantage of this is that if you remember to set up the lens correctly, then you will see that the EXIF information is filled in correct, both with the focal length and the, the aperture. It is so that as long as it knows the minimum sorry, the maximum aperture, then the camera based on, on the uh, interaction with the lens, even though there are no CPU contacts, you can actually figure out which aperture you're shooting at. So this one is very, very useful if you ask me. But remember to set up the lens. That's my issue. When I mount a new lens, I always forgot to change this. I mean, my EXIF information is wrong and it's, it's a mess. Also, focus fine tune. This is about doing some fine tuning of your lens and then the camera will remember the fine tuning next time you mount that lens. I uh, think this could be very useful if you're using autofocus lenses, of course, but I am no expert here, I must admit, but I just think it's important you know this option is there. And finally, firmware version. Here you can see the versions, and if you check Nikon's homepage, you can see if you have a, an older version than what they have there, and if you do, then I would strongly recommend you download the latest version. Then you get bug fixes and new features, maybe, uh, but certainly bug fixes and corrections which is, I guess, always a good thing. So that was the setup menu. Then we have my menu. And the point with my menu is exactly to give you a menu that's built for your purpose. And thereby you don't need to go into all the deep levels of the other menus, but you can actually just stay in your own my menu and, uh, and be happy here, so to speak. The trick with this menu is that in order to build your menu, you need to go to the bottom here. So if you want to remove an item, obviously you just select that one. Then you say, I want exposure delay mode. I don't want to have that anymore in my, my, my menu. And then it says it has removed it, right? So that's how we remove items. If you rank items again, then you, you pick one, say that all, or all of a sudden long exposure, noise reduction is simply so important that you need to move that up. And you can see here now I have a little flat cursor and it says the yellow bar tells me where I would put the option here. So I do like this and now long exposure is right here. If I want to move it back, I of course select it again and move it. And that's the way it works. So if I want to add an item, I can select that one and here you can see I, can, I need to know what it is I'm looking for. So if we just take the playback menu and say I want to just take the slideshow just to be completely crazy. I take that back and then I now I have to choose the position for the slideshow and say I say it is so important that I want it on top Then I just say OK. If I go to the top of the of the my menu and I have slideshow which of course is completely crazy. The last one choose tab is if I just take the help text here, you can have my menu, but you can also have it to choose those things you have set up the most recently. And uh, thereby you don't have to configure the my menu if, if there are you know, just a few things you're using. You can just take the recent settings and that will work fine. So that's actually my menu. Okay, that was the first five out of six menus. I am impressed if you stay tuned throughout the entire video. Good job. If you think I was too harsh on the retouch menu or have questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below. Then I can address them in the part two. As always, thank you for watching. Happy shooting. Take care. Bye bye.